when you're doing a puzzle, like uh, suppose I'm doing puzzle number one, where I can swap any two things, and maybe um, I'm doing the puzzle and I make a move, like I do uh, position three swapped with position five, and I'll, I'll write that down. So I make this move. And then I realize, oh, you know what? I actually didn't want to do that. Let me sort of go backwards. Well, in a lot of puzzles like this, you actually do have that ability. So I can swap them back like that. When we do that, we call that an inverse permutation. I did 3, 5, and then I undid it. And that's the way we express inverse of permutation alpha. I undid it by going 5, 3. Now 5, 3, you can write permutations, you could put any number first, so I could put sort of the 3 first, and then you sort of cycle to the right and swing and loop around. So for two cycles, the inverse is itself. Take a look, if I do another one, uh, 5 and position 10, switches those two numbers, then if I do 5 and 10 again, it gets me back to where I was. So for, for for two cycles, uh, for a two cycle, the permutation is its own inverse. If I switch over to puzzle number two, in this one, and just to make this simple, I'm going to uh, put it into solved state. So imagine I take, I'll call this one beta, and I switch uh, the thing in position two with the position Go to the thing in position two goes to position seven. The things in position seven goes to position fifteen. The thing in position fifteen goes to position two. So those are actually be the numbers in this case. Also, position two is going to position seven is going to position fifteen. And the numbers get switched around, and then I say, oh, you know what? Let me. I actually realize I didn't want to do that. So I can get those numbers back by just doing it. In reverse, put the thing in position 15, back to position 7, and put that back into position 2. So the inverse is going to be 15, 7, 2. But I could write that. You could write any of the numbers first. So I'm actually going to put this 2 first, and then sort of go to the right, but then I loop around and get to the 15. So the inverse of 2, 7, 15 is 2, 15, 7. And this will actually work for any cycle. I'll just uh, just to use to use Greek letters. I'll use a gamma. So let's say that my gamma. I'll make two the smallest number two five one three eight. The inverse. Whoops. Would be eight. Nope. I shouldn't use a one there. Let me make this a four. There we go. Doesn't matter, but I like to write it that way. So the inverse would be. The numbers backwards but you could still put the smallest number first and then the second number if you go to the right would actually become sort of the eight two eight three four five and I think in general when I make an inverse for a cycle I'm gonna go back to alpha so if I have something like two four eight seven three we can go right to the inverse by Still writing 2 as the first number, but then sort of writing the numbers, sort of go to the left in the original cycle and see what numbers sort of come up. So 2, 3, 7, 8, 4. So basically I'm writing down the first number still, and I'm going to the end and writing the numbers backwards. Well, that's what happens if I have a single cycle. Its inverse is just sort of the reverse of it. But if I have a more complicated thing, like imagine I have a set of moves, and here I'll I'll make a simplified thing that has five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. And imagine I have um, I do two two different. I make a move that's more complicated, so it can't be described with just one cycle. Let's say two, four, one, two, five. So imagine I'm I'm doing this this alpha move. Uh, what happens? is that first the two and the four change change positions 
So then it would be one, four, three, two, five. Okay, just the two and four. And then position one's gonna to go to position two. So here in the sort of final thing, one, two, three, four. The thing in position one is gonna to go to position two. So this one's gonna end up there as a one. The thing in position two, which is a four now, is gonna to go to position five. So we get a four there. And the thing in position five, which is a five, is gonna to go to position one. And the other two numbers, the three and two, stay back in there, so, or, or in, it's not the original position, but it's the position they were in when that second thing happened. Now, the inverse, if I do the inverse to this, I'll just make an arrow downward, it should undo the move. Well, let's think how that would happen. For, to, to, to get it into this state, first I swapped two and three, then I did a one goes to two, two, two goes to five, five goes to one. So what the inverse has to be is I would have to do the thing that I did last. I'd have to do that first. So I have to fix this up. So I have to go to the inverse of the five, two, one, or the one, two, five. All right, it's five, two, one. And then I would undo the two cycle. Um, but I like to write this. I, I like to do this as 1, 5, 2. I like to still write the smallest number first. And I would still write this as 2, 4. So I guess what I'm saying is that if I have um, if I have several moves, I'll just call them. And I want to take the inverse of it. I end up doing the moves, the inverse of the moves in reverse order. which is kind of what I did over here. My initial thing was 2, 4, followed by 1, 2, 5, and the inverse was 1, 5, 2, which is the uh, inverse of 1, 2, 5, followed by 2, 4, which is the inverse of 2, 4. If you wanted to test, you can multiply or take the composition of something with this inverse. In this case, 1, 2, sorry. In this case, 2, 4, 1, 2, 5, and then compose it with 1, 5, 2, 2, 4. And if you did it, just to get it started, uh, you put 2 in, it becomes a 4. 4 stays a 4. 4 stays a 4. 4 goes to 2. So 2 goes to 2. And that would happen for every number. So that's what happens with inverses. It undoes that move. Now, before we apply this to a, to a puzzle, I just want to say another quick thing. You might remember from a previous lecture that if you take two two cycles, like two, five, two, seven, they have the same first number, and you do the composition, you get two, five, seven. And by the same token, if you have a three cycle, you can decompose it into two, five, like using this first number and then using the first and third. Well, this could be generalized a little. If I have something like, um, 2, 5, 2, 7, 2, 3, 2, 9, for example. So I have a whole bunch of 2 cycles being composed. Watch what happens. I put 2 in, it becomes a 5. 5 stays a 5. 5 stays a 5. 5 stays a 5. 5 goes in, becomes a 2. 2 becomes 7. 7 stays a 7. 7 stays a 7. Put the 7 in, stays a 7. Put the 7 in here, becomes a 2. 2 becomes a 3. 3 stays a 3. Put the 3 in, it stays a 3. This 3 stays a 3. 3 goes into here, becomes a 2. 2 goes in, becomes a 9. 9 goes in, stays a 9. Stays a 9, stays a 9, becomes a 2. So if we have a whole bunch of 2 cycles that each have the same first number, when we put them together, we end up with a big cycle that has it as its first number, and these other numbers end up being second, third, fourth, and so on. This can work in reverse also. If I have any series, any big cycle, 5, 7, 3, 9, 1, or whatever it is, I can rewrite it by using this number as the first number in all the cycles and just go through, make the 7 the second number in the first cycle, make the 3 the next one, make the 9 the next one. So you could check that out, and it does work. So it's kind of, it's kind of like factoring. It's decomposing a single cycle into like a product or a composition of 
two cycles. So let me show you how this idea can apply to an actual puzzle. If you open up puzzle number one, and uh, that's the one where you can swap any two of the numbers. Uh, to make it look like my board, you can click on this, this custom button over here, and then you can, they'll all be blank, and then you can push the numbers, you know, push a one in this, and it will, it will fill in the board so it looks like this if you want to follow along. So of the trillions of ways to arrange these 16 numbers, this is one of them, and it can be described with as a permutation. This is a description of what would have to be done to the board if it were in its starting state with the numbers in order to turn it into this. Do with the cycle notation. So I locate the one there, and I see it's there in position four. Then I locate the four, and it's over there in position 11. I locate the 11, it's in position six. And six is in position one, so that ends the first cycle. Now I look for the two, it's all the way down there in position 14. Find the 14, it's in position five. Find the five, it's over there in position seven. The seven is in position 12. The 12 is in position nine. And the nine ends up in position two. So I'm back to two, so that's that, that cycle. And there's a few more numbers, like this three is all the way in position 16. And the 16 is in position 10. And the 10 is in position three, that ends that cycle. And the remaining three numbers, that is the eight, the 13, and the 15 are already in their original position. So this is the, um, this is the initial permutation. Now, I only have, uh, I have 120 different moves I'm allowed to make, but if I were able to do anything I want, do any permutation I want, the permutation I would do would be the inverse. Because the inverse is the numbers in, is the cycles in reverse order and all inverted. Now this is not one of the legal 120 moves, but I just want to take you through that. So this cycle, I like to write it, you could write it as, as if you wanted to write it as 10, 16, 3, you know, that would be okay. But I prefer to write it with the three first still, and then I just go to the left basically and see, come across the 10 and then the 16, but I write it in this order. Same thing here, I'm gonna write the, the um, I'm gonna write the two first, and then I'm gonna go to the left, and as I encounter the numbers, I'm gonna write them though from left to right. So nine, 12, seven, five, 14. And this last cycle, this um, one for um, this one four eleven sixteen. I'm gonna write it as one six eleven four. So if I could do just one move, this move would actually restore the puzzle. That's when you compose something with this inverse, it restores it. But this, since this is not one of the legal moves, I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to factor these cycles from what I've seen before. I can change 3, 10, 16 to 3, 10, 3, 16. And I could change this 2, 9, 12, 7, 5, 14 to 2, 9, 2, 12, 2, 7, 2, 5, 214 and I could change this 16114 I'm just going to I'm going to write it underneath here 16 114 So I now have this list and these are moves these are all legal moves so there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and if I do these 10 legal moves we're going to find out if it does restore the puzzle like it should So let's see if um, if this works. According to this, I should first do position three with position 10, and then position three with position 16, 
and then one with position nine. Oh, I see the problem. It wasn't one with nine, it was two with nine. So undo that. Two with nine, and then two with position 12, and then two with position seven, and then two with position five, and then two with position 14, and then one with position six, and then one with position 11, and then one with position four. And as you can see, the puzzle is all solved. So <clears throat> what we did to refresh is that we took the initial state of the puzzle, wrote it as a permutation, used the fact that the inverse of a permutation that's written as a composition of cycles, you could take each of the cycles and put them in reverse order and take the inverse of each one of those. Then I decompose each of the cycles into pairs, swaps, and since alpha composed with alpha inverse should be the identity, and then I did this to what was already done, remember the initial stage is what's already been done to it, uh, it should have solved the puzzle, and it did. Now to apply this reasoning to puzzle number two, where you can only do three swaps, is going to be um, trickier, but not that much. <clears throat> I just want to remind you uh, of two sort of rules. One of them is that if you have two two cycles that have the same first number, they can be turned into a two cycle that has that same first number, and then the second number of the first one will be second, and then the second number of the second will be third. Also, it's true if you have two three cycles that have the same first and third number, and you actually like do the product, the composition of it, you end up with something like this A, B, C, D. So it's like these become the first cycle, and this becomes the first number of the second cycle, <clears throat> and this becomes the second number of the second cycle. So we can also go in the other direction. If we have two two cycles, they are equivalent to the two three cycles being composed of A, B, C. That's basically this number, this number, and this number. And then the first and third numbers are going to be the same, but the middle number of the second is going to be that. Okay, that's going to come in handy because here I have the um, same setup, but this one I have to make cycles of three. And I want to write down my sequence of moves. So basically I want to, I want to do the, the inverse of alpha. Now this was alpha. We have already turned it into a product of swaps, two cycles. But now what I can do, if I don't have two cycles as an option anymore, so I can look at them two at a time. So like this 310, 316, I could write as 310, 16, because they have the same first number. And this 2912, I could write, this 29212, I could write as 2912. And this 2725, I can write as 275. But this one's kind of interesting. These don't have the same first number, 214 and 16, but I can write it as 2141 and 261. And then finally, the 111, 14 is 111, 4. Okay, let's see what happens when I do. In theory, this should work. Let's see. So let's see if the sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 moves actually works. I'll do it nice and carefully. Position 3 goes to position 10, goes to position 16. The thing in position 2 goes to position 9, goes to position 12. 
the thing in position two goes to position seven, goes to position five, then two goes to 14, goes to one, then two goes to six, goes to one, and finally one goes to 11, goes to four. And as you can see, that worked. Not surprising, alpha, alpha inverse got me back to the beginning. My alpha was this complicated expression. My alpha inverse, first I made it into two cycles, and then I combined the two cycles into three cycles. And in doing so, I was able to solve that puzzle. As some of these other puzzles have these buttons on them, and you can see that if you push one button on the right, there's something that says inverse, and if you push that, it's going to un uh, it's going to undo it. Uh, puzzle ten has four different sorts of moves, and each one has an inverse associated with it. Uh, puzzle number eleven also it has two different moves, and each one has an inverse associated with it. And also puzzle number 12 has some unusual moves with inverses. But even something like the Rubik's Cube itself has inverses. If I do red, this is clockwise, red, red, green, white, white. Undoing it is white, white, this is counterclockwise, green, counterclockwise and red counterclockwise twice. So inverse is a really important part of puzzles. Most puzzles of this sort, you can sort of move a piece one direction or the other, and descrambling the puzzle is generally uh, trying to undo a lot of stuff that's been done. So that's how inverses work and how they can relate to some of these puzzles.